Sorry about that. Hope I'm ready to take a heavy drug now. <laughs> I'm the only one that's sober, so I'm gonna have some clear, concise thoughts with a couple of punchlines. I'm gonna try to get some intelligence going on. It's crazy because like all these like it's this DMT stuff. Y'all know about the DMT, right? Everybody's doing this DMT stuff. Everybody getting high on this stuff and then it's a lot of peer pressure because I watched the Joe Rogan experience. And that's all they talk about. And they got all these videos, so now it's like creeping in. All my friends are doing it. But uh, they ain't got me convinced. I'm not, mm, no, nope, no. Nope. Every time they tell me about that shit, like, yo, because I come, I'm old. I remember back when crack came out. You know what I mean? When crack came out, it was the same beginning. Like, yo, it's cool, it's cool. No, no, it's just another drug, it's cool. Two weeks later, they suck a dick. No! Oh, no, no. I'm going to let it ride out for a couple years. I'm going to see how this, how the long-term DMT affects Because I don't want to be sucking dick in two weeks. Oh, if you suck dick, you suck dick. That's good for you. Well, you know, that's not me. You know what I mean? That's, I'm not with it. Well, fuck that. Like, I smoke weed. Because every time they explain the, the effects of DMT, they explain, like, everything looks different. Everything like, yo, my name is Paco Loco. I am crazy as is the way I am. I smoke weed, and I see that shit. I see the stars aligning up and talking to me and shit. Like, it happens to me. Like, I see it as, as it is. And you know why I see it as is? Because I got the DMT or anything going on in my head. Because I used to box when I was little, and I wasn't too good with the dipping. And I, I got punched in the face a couple times. So <laughs> I, got, I got knocked out a whole bunch of times. Like, it, whoop, whoop, whoop. So then you hear Rocky talk to you and shit like, get up, you son of a bitch. <laughs> get up. Life ain't all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> It'll beat you down if you let it. Oh, this is cool. Got a little uh, guitar pick thing on the floor. <laughs> oh. Come over here. I want to tell y'all about my journey, right? I had a journey, a spiritual journey. And in my spiritual journey, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. And I know that's it's, it's the wrong way to begin a journey, growing up as a Jehovah's Witness. Because when you grow up as a Jehovah's first of all, it's a good sales pitch. They get you in, like, it's your family. Like, we're gonna, people don't know the truth. We're going to go out, we're going to save lives. We're going to go talk to people. And so we think it's cool. What we doing as a Jehovah's Witness to go out to knock on people's door because in our head, we're trying to save you and shit. And then we go out to the community, people hate us. We don't understand. Like, people just, what the fuck y'all made for me? And they're like, oh shit. So they didn't tell us that the people that really get angry are demonically possessed and shit. So we know, we, we like, oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. Like, everything's the devil. But um, it's funny though, because being Jehovah's Witness, we got a lot of good pop stars. Y'all know about the pop stars Jehovah's Witnesses have? We got, uh, let's see if y'all can guess it, alright? I'm gonna make a change for the rest of my life. It's gonna feel real good. It's gonna make a difference. It's gonna make it wild. Jehovah's Witness, my Jackson. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't, that's not a good example. He's gonna fuck with the kids and shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> this shit is so good. Ah! Another one was, uh, uh, maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my, my mother, mother too cold. Maybe I'm just, just like my father. I think that's the words. But <laughs> another one. Who the fuck is this? Picture me in 546 and Biggie Smalls. Jehovah's Witness. So it's a guy who I was telling you know, that's how we started off growing up as Jehovah's Witness. And it's kind of scary because people mess with you as a Jehovah's Witness. We try to preach people and then Somehow along the line, like people fuck with us and shit, and they be like, I'm the devil. So we really think the devil, like, you know how many times we done knocked on the door? They think it's cool to fuck with us. Like, we knock on the door, we're like, yo, we're trying to save your life. You know, God's coming down, and they answer the door, like, I'm the devil. And you go, like, oh shit. And then we mark it off, don't go that door no more. That's the devil. <laughs> that was crazy. So I went on, it's not like in a spiritual path, it's not like I gave them up, they kind of gave us up. Because uh, they got this thing called this fellowship, and then all of a sudden, like if you commit one of the sins, they stop talking to you. So they kicked this out. So they just fellowship. Cause my mom started cheating. This communicated. They kicked this right off. I actually wanted to be a Mormon because I thought Mormons was cool. Plus, I like the a multiple wives part. Like I think I can handle multiple wives and shit. So I tried it. But thing is, none of the Mormons talk to me. No, they don't. They talk to everybody else. They walk right past me every time. So I'm figuring that's not my spiritual path. 
Um, one time in Waikiki, I almost became a Hare Krishna. Y'all know about the Hare Krishnas? I'm in, I'm in Waikiki, and they come with the music and the parade. Ta -ha, Hare Krishna, Rama, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and I'm Puerto Rican, and I like dancing, so I'm like, mm -hmm, Hare Krishna, Rama, Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. And they come up to me like, you got the spirit, you got the spirit. And and I'm like, I know, I feel it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm just so I said, I read their book. I studied this book they got. And uh, I like them too, because they, uh, one of their uh, the elders is a beetle and shit, a spiritual beetle. What's the name? John Lennon? John the Lennon. One? Oh, another one, John Harrison. <laughs> I thought it was John Lennon. One of the beetles, right? But that's one of them. So they set up a little thing, but I set it up. I want too much going into me. But what happened was, I ran into this. Santa Maria, y'all know about Santa Maria? Anybody any Santa Maria's in here? Let's pour the sage up a little bit, let's clear the room out. I'm about to tell y'all some spooky shit. <laughs> oh! It's spooky, well, if you don't know what Santa Maria is, Santa Maria is like voodoo and Christianity mixed. Like it's got, they go into the, cause back in the days when the slave trade came, they couldn't worship their old gods, but if they could, if it made it look like it's something Christian. So they got these seven gods and they actually transform into different saints and they got the, you go in and they worship them. The difference between this religion and our and other religions is like, when you pray to your God and you summon your God, he's coming. Yeah, he is. Oh, and you're gonna feel it. You'll see the room change. You'll see get the, wind, the wind come in the room and stuff will start splashing around all around the room. Yo, real, like I've been praying to Jesus for a long time. Ain't never felt nothing much shit like that. Woo, this is scary. So I'm messing with this girl. She's a um, in South Korea. She her god is like the ocean, of, the goddess of the ocean, uh, Yama Yama. And then she introduced me to this other guy who's Eligua. And Eligua is like the god of the roadways and like opportunities and like different things that come into your life. They told me I was the uh, Papa Shango. They told me I was like you Shango. Like you got the warrior spirit in it. Like you fight. Like you got it in you. You got the spirit in you. So they told me all about this. So this woman, what she did do was like open me up sexually. Cause by then I, like, I must have had maybe like 10 sexual encounters before that, I was young. After that, I was having like 10 sexual encounters a day. All of me was fucking. Ooh, why she turned me to a freak, just all the time. That's the way I like fucking now, just three, four times a day because of her. And um, so she opened me up. One time we had a party, everybody's chilling like this, we got some music on. She introduced me to the Aqua guy. The Eligua guy is like, you want to meet him? I should have Googled information because I'm curious about what they are. So I was like, yeah, you going to talk to me about it? He's like, yeah. You want to meet Eligua? I'm like, yeah, go ahead and call him, bring him on. So he starts chanting and shit. I don't know what he's saying in his chant, but it sounds like, like this. Mama say, mama say, mama say, mama say, so, something like that. And I'm not worried about word. You know what I mean? I don't want to really bring no spirits in here. But <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a true ass story. I'll make this up. So, so she goes into the room. The dude's eyes roll back in the head. And like he loses control of his body. He's like, mm, starts growling. She's celebrating. She's running around the room like, oh, he's here. He's here. She's spraying water in the air like she's Triple H in front of WrestleMania. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are you doing? It's inside. I'm like, oh. So then the room gets cold. It's like this wind just whipping around the room. I got some real ass thug North Philly gangsters in the house right now with guns, drugs, they have multiple felonies. <laughs> Everybody shook. Everybody fucking shook. The whole room just whoop right out the door. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. We ain't never seen nothing like that before. So I'm like, hey, bro. Let me go. <laughs> I heard that public service announcement. Like, <laughs> so, Shut up, mate. I'm looking for some support for my homies. I go to my brother, who's like this two time Iraqi war veteran. This dude is a straight soldier to the heart. Like, anytime you want him, he's there for you. I go to get him for some backup. This motherfucker's in the corner crying with a stack of Bibles. <laughs> but he had all of my three Bibles stacked to the top. Like, oh, Jesus, help us. Help us, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, all right, I mean, I got to handle this. So my homie was like, yo, you done invited the devil in your house. What you going to do? I'm like, well, I asked the devil to leave. Shit. I'm like, go up to him. And I had a, a 
45 caliber gun in the house for protection. It's the USA, it's legal. It's totally legal, but it's for house protection. And uh, 45 caliber is like this big cannon, but it's little. So I had it back then, I was just like, yo, I seen that TV show Supernatural. You know how in the last episode of Supernatural, like the monsters come out in the last scene and you get to shoot the monsters? I was freaking I was gonna shoot the monsters. I don't know no better. So the guy comes out, he was just like, you want something from me? I was just like, no, I don't want none of that from you. Like, I'm gonna ask you to leave and please leave. He's like, well, I'm gonna give you a warning. The police are on their way. As soon as I leave, they're coming. So they actually, he left. Cause you gotta be respectful. If you're not respectful, he's not gonna leave you. So he left. Me and the girl had sex one more time. One more time, we had sex one more time, cause she's a freak and it was real good. So I left it up to her. We brought her, I left her up, we came out, but I broke it up, and that was my little uh, experience with Santa Ria. Santa Ria is a lot like Christmas and shit, cause it got like Christianity, but it's actually something really pagan that you're actually doing. So that's the Santa Ria story. Right now, I'm, uh, I can say I'm Muslim. That was, I'm a Muslim. Uh, I took Shihada, and, uh, but I'm not that kind of Muslim that y'all thinking about that's terroristic and to be bombing and stuff. I'm not at all into that. I'm into the other Islam, you know, the one that said that white people are the devil. It's not, <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't say, it's not, I don't believe in it fully. It's just that it's actually fucked up because you grew up your whole life thinking this and then you gotta go work with white people and shit and it's real scary and shit they just be telling they gonna, they gonna lock you up they, and then you meet your white people and they cool and I got lots of white friends so I figured that's not the one plus it was another thing with Islam that I wasn't really down with it's like the whole suicide bombing thing you know, yeah. 72 virgins who the hell want virgins? I want me some whores like, give me some whores I want 72 virgins no, that's not for me I would have become Catholic but in Philly it's kind of hard when you go into a Catholic building and like they say don't worship in graven images and that's all you see. And it's like, I know the Catholic Church get a lot of uh, 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 flat for the child molesting thing. And I can say truthfully, they didn't molest me because I was an ugly child when I was a young man. I had bumps and shit. Like nobody wanna fuck me. I was nasty. I know. From, but back with the Islam thing. One of the beautiful things about Islam is when you get into it is that. Uh, Everywhere you go, this it got different forms of it, different way. And it's funny because like if some some people come become Islam when they're in jail. And when they're in jail, they do the Islamic prayers totally different than anybody else. It sounds angry. Like when they talk, when they pray, it's like, it's, like, yo, you pray? Like a fuck? Like that don't sound like a prayer. Like, and then when you go to the um the Arab guys, they make noises you've never heard before when they pray. Like what? Like that was just one word. Like <laughs> he just flipping it some shit you never heard. And then when you're around uh, Americans, they sing it a whole different way. They be like, Oh love. Oh, that shit sound beautiful. We got another commercial break. My <laughs> friend. Mike Ray been doing it. He's been a DMT trick. Oh I'm just saying, you don't need to take DMT if you want to take a, a spiritual trip. Like, for real, for real, I'm just scared. Give it a long time. How much more minutes I got? You're good. One minute. All right, so don't take that. One more thing. I'm going to close out with a quick one. Quick one-liner. Why did the pig cross the road? I don't know. To give the chicken... A jaywalking ticket. Fuck the pig. <laughs>